thought I'd just catch up with you and have a chat. The past couple of videos on my YouTube thing have just been a little bit high impact for me, and that's that's not really my vibe, my energy. Um, and it's um, just been it's just been pretty demanding running the Kickstarter campaign, um, catching up with everyone, uh, and then explaining uh, the Kickstarter campaign and explaining uh, game development and, and all that stuff. And um, that's not really me. It's um, Honestly, to be totally honest with you, it's um, it's it's not my favorite part, <laughs> having to constantly uh, explain uh, to people that I'm um, not a scammer and that I am a real game developer, and that's that's boring to me. That's not very interesting. Working on video games is one of my passions, but it's not my only passion, and I strongly believe and I have a strong understanding of the fact that you need to have a diverse, wide range of life experiences in order to create any kind of interesting art and any kind of interesting video game. I always found my favorite video games growing up were games that were interesting, that had different things that I didn't know about, that I hadn't seen before in other video games. And of course when you're a kid you don't really know anything anyway, so everything's kind of new to you. But we are all older, uh, we are quite a bit more jaded, we're more cynical, and that's just what happens as you grow older. But as you produce any form of art, and especially with video games, um, if you don't have interesting life experiences, then all you are doing with your art and all you are doing with your video game is just blindly regurgitating the other media that you see. You have no choice but to copy and just try to remix whatever you see without injecting anything of your own life experiences. So I find it is extremely important and is absolutely vital for anyone who creates any form of art, whether it's drawing, writing, or creating video games, is you cannot just be absorbed and obsessed with the thing that you are creating. You need to go out, you need to live your life, you need to have more life experience, and you need to experience a diverse uh, range of different hobbies and interests, explore things that maybe you haven't even heard of before. When it comes to creating video games, uh, I've spent the past few years spending the majority of my focus on Silver Falls games, and in doing so I've written, I've spent thousands of hours writing for the lore and the characters of Silver Falls, and I always do um, significant interest, uh, um, research when it comes to the characters' interests, the characters' hobbies, and their history. And in doing so, I go out and sometimes I'll actually go and do those hobbies. If a character is, say, interested in wood carving, you know, I think, okay, so this character, his his thing is wood carving, that's what everyone knows him for. I'll go out and I'll do wood carving so I can have a stronger understanding of it. Um, if a character plays the mandolin, I think, I okay, I better learn how to play the mandolin so I understand it better, so I can write this character, so I can bring some life and some soul and something genuinely interesting and of substance to whatever thing that I'm sharing with you guys, whatever thing I'm creating, I want to make sure that it has some connection to the real world, to life, and that I have experience in that thing so I have something interesting to say about it. Otherwise I'm just blindly regurgitating and it feels like, you know, you guys know when I say RPG Maker game, where it just feels like this generic thing that's just copying every single other RPG Maker game that's that's been made, you know. And obviously there are some unique and interesting ones out there, but you know what I mean, right. Um, and that's why it's so important that I always try to encourage people, don't just play video games, don't just try to copy other video games. Uh, for the Silver Fall series, I taught myself how to play a wide range of instruments. Instruments is another one of my passions and hobbies. I haven't been playing the fiddle for very long, only about two years, so I'm still very early in my fiddle playing journey. I, I got a little bit sick of video games this evening. I've just been working on video games nonstop. I've been getting nonstop messages from people who say your Kickstarter sucks. Um, and I'm kind of sick of it, honestly, at the moment. So I, I just took a break. I stepped away from work. Um, and I spent um, like two hours learning a new uh, Irish tune on the fiddle. So uh, just what, what I played, what I just played in the intro, um, I'm probably getting a couple parts wrong. I'm still learning it. I've, I've only been playing it for about two hours. So I'm trying to memorize it, learn it, and I can, I can play it at the hospital um, where I volunteer to play music for cancer patients. Uh, I can play it at the uh, pub for my Irish music session. So one of my passions is 
uh, collecting and restoring antique instruments. So I'm going to share something with you that is absurdly rare. This is a table violin from Germany. It is about 150 years old. And I won it in an auction. And I've been looking for one for years. And I never thought I would actually own one. But I was able to win it in an auction. I had to stay up till 4 a.m. in the morning, didn't I? Uh, but I, I won it. And it was in bits and pieces. It wasn't functional, so I was able to uh, restore and repair it and get it playable. I had to make a brand new bridge for it. I put violin strings on it, which have lower tension, made some modifications. Um, and I, I played this at, at the pub last night with my Irish club here. And I'll just give you, I mean, I, I don't have a table here. I can't really play it, but I'll just let you hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Quite an interesting sound, and it's it's so neat to think that 150 years ago people were sitting around in a German pub <laughs> playing music and singing along and dancing along and having a drink and just enjoying time. So I really enjoy restoring antique instruments because it gives me a chance to learn more about the world. Um, I can research the history of the instrument, the country that it came from, and everything surrounding that. Um, and I can use these instruments in my compositions. Now admittedly for my, I would say my, my games that I, I produce um, to pay the bills are games that I have to make obscenely, ridiculously fast. Things like Clash or Ball, uh, Gorgeous Sword, Long Hard Justice, and a few other games that I have coming up. Because again, this is making games is my day job. I have games that are extremely important to me that I pour my heart and soul my passion into, like Silver Falls. And then I have games um, that I just have to make very quickly so they don't have that kind of... Um, you know, like, oh, I spent two years planning this game out. I have games where I plan them out within a week and then I have to develop them as fast as possible, again, to pay bills. So you have to balance that out, your bigger projects with your smaller ones, um, and find a way to pay the bills with your work. So uh, those smaller projects generally don't, I don't use acoustic instruments uh, in them because it takes some more time to, to compose and record for them. Um, so I generally for Silver Falls and, you know, my, my bigger games is what I use these antique instruments for. And then I'll just rely on synthesized voices for my other soundtracks. So, you know, I have, I have quite a few other hobbies, you know, I really enjoy, um, backpacking, uh, hiking, uh, camping, spending time in the outdoors, just wandering through small gold mining towns and wandering through the mountains and hanging out at saloons out in the middle of old gold mining towns and singing music and songs with strangers. And it's those kind of life experiences, you learn more about the world and you spend time out there around other people and you learn more about the history of the world and other people's lives. And that's what allows you to create interesting art. It's what allows you to tell an interesting story, having your own life experiences um, and translating that into video game concepts. What's so important when I plan out a video game is I first... Um, pinpoint exactly what my objective is in what experience, what is the end experience that I want to give somebody? What do I want them to experience? And so I focus on the feeling of what do I want someone to feel? And then I think, how do I achieve that feeling? And then I think, well, how can I build a game around achieving that feeling now that I know that this is what I want them to experience? So that's how I plan out a game. And to me, that is the most effective method for me. Everyone is going to have their own process, but for me, that is how I plan out a game because it means that if I take that approach, whatever I come up with is going to be interesting in a way that it is aiming for an end goal and it is built towards achieving something as opposed to, well, I think maybe I'll just copy a template and I'll just change up a few things to me, I would never, ever design a game that way. When you are very early on in your game development um, career, you'll have to do that. You just have to because you have no other choice. You're still learning. You are still developing your ability to create and to conceive concepts. So early on in your career, you're just going to have to copy a template conceptually and then just change up a few things. But as you get farther along in your career and you've developed more and more games, I, I couldn't even tell you how many game concepts that I've, I've come up with, and the vast majority I haven't developed. 
but it's an important exercise to do that, to write out your ideas and develop, to develop and sharpen your ability and to improve your ability to conceive of a game concept. So to me, the most interesting uh, and important part of conceiving a game concept is to make sure that whatever I come up with is interesting in some way. And I don't necessarily aim to like fit into a genre. When it comes to genre, I use genres as framing devices to set people's uh, minds in a mindset, to help set up a mindset. And um, I, would, I would rather uh, just come up with some weird, interesting game concept uh, as opposed to just making genre games anyway. But um, anyway, I hope uh, you're all doing well. And uh, make sure you don't miss out on the first of next month. I'm, I'm still finishing up... Uh, our uh, new game launch for that, but we'll, we'll launch a new Silver Falls game on the first of next month. We'll do a live stream. We'll hang out. We'll play it. Hope you're all well. Okay. And again, remember, I'm not a YouTuber. <sighs> Good Lord Almighty. I'm not a YouTuber. I don't want to be a YouTuber. I don't have a YouTube channel. I'm just a normal guy. And honestly, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of sick of people telling me my, my Kickstarter campaign isn't very good. I'm just sick of hearing it. I just want to make video games for people. I just want to, I just want to restore antique instruments. I want to play some music. I want to, I want to play some folk tunes. I need, I need to get back to body conditioning, uh, because I, I generally, uh, try to get into my physical peak and then that allows me to physically work the long hours needed to make all of my games. And I've already gone past my limit in terms of being able to sustain a long workload. Uh, I went past my limit before I started the Kickstarter campaign. And it was probably a bad idea that I didn't take about a month break to rest and get back into body conditioning. Uh, but a bunch of people were just asking me about the Breath of Thunder game. I was showing people bits and pieces and they were saying, oh man, do a Kickstarter and we'll, we'll gauge interest. And so I, I went for it, um, but I didn't realize that people expected the... This is just how it is. People expect to see a finished game for a Kickstarter because they've been scammed and burned so many times that uh, people uh, won't have any interest in a game that isn't finished and that seems to be the way of it people keep telling me they expect to see a finished game or they're not going to support it which blows my mind because people support the kickstarter in order to fund the development of the game but from the feedback that i've received from everyone uh kickstarter seems to be um what people expect it to be is a pre-order system where they can get a bunch of cool bonuses and a very good deal on the game and I didn't understand that. I didn't realize that. So um, uh, that is one of the contrib contributing factors to why I'm still getting some negative feedback on my Kickstarter. Hey man, I'm not a professional Kickstarter runner. I'm just a game developer, and um, I kind of need a. I just need a break, man. I I need a. I need to get back to body conditioning. I need to get back to my physical peak because I am starting to put on weight, and I know that when I start putting weight back, that means that I need to stop the game development and I need to get back to the physical training, I gotta get back to my peak, and then that way I know that I can handle long work weeks, you know. I didn't think I would ever have to do 130 hour work weeks, but that's what I've been doing this year. Anyway, probably not great. Um, I need to start winding that down, so I'm just finishing up some games and and, um, and wrapping up um, some titles that I can launch. Okay, so that's all for the day. Take care, everyone. I hope you're well. See you later.